Split. This is Split. the somewhat sequel to Unbreakable. Yes. It. Uh, you don't know that until the end. And I, I feel like I'd rather just talk about that ending real quick. That last little 10 second clip or whatever it was, minute clip, before we actually okay. get into it. Because I was really annoyed by it. I don't know how you felt. Oh, really? Did you know that was coming? Uh, know? Well, no. Be- and even after, I didn't know because uh, the first time I watched Split, I had not seen Unbreakable. Okay. So you had so no I idea what that Split was about. When it first came out like a year ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, I was like, oh. I, I was like, this must be something. Like, yeah. I don't know. So I had to look it up to see what it was. So, yeah, that that's all. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Good story. Uh, yeah, when I watched it, I knew that it was connected. And I had oh. heard people's minds were blown. They're like, the ending is so crazy. I can't believe it's connected Unbreakable. I'm so excited. So and it, when I watched it, all it was was Bruce Willis sitting in a diner. And there's a... Um, a news thing going on the TV and someone's like, Oh, this reminds me of that time when that guy blew up the train and the building and all that stuff. What was his name? And then it pans over and there's Bruce Willis. He's like, Mr. Glass. And then it cuts away. And I was like, really? That was it. Like I was expecting something a lot more intense from Bruce Willis being in this movie than just that little teaser i'm okay with it being that little teaser yeah but or with that that's that little subtle one but Mm -hmm. the way oh this crazy person who has this controversial multi you know multi person multiple just oh my gosh multiple personality disorder yeah like that reminds me of a guy who killed a lot of people yeah what how doesn't make sense it's another one oh. of M Knight's force convenience things, you know. Like, it, like there why was a, would there, there, there has to be a better way to shoe that in, like shoehorn it in, and have it make more sense? Like, why people would be talking about Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah, no, exactly. There was, I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 what it should have been because have you watched the trailer for Glass yet? No, I didn't even know there was one. Oh yeah, there's a third movie coming out called Glass. Oh, I know. No, I know there's a third movie. I just didn't know there was a trailer okay. yet. Um. Anyways, they they are in a mental a mental institution together, and they should have in the news report said, "Oh, he's going there, which is famous for housing Samuel Jackson's character." There you go. You know what I mean, like. Yeah, it's a little weird that they would bring it up, but like if it was a big deal that he's there, then it would make a little bit more sense than just a random person being like, What was that weird guy's name who killed all those people a long time ago? Like, I like, but I like the, I kind of like the part where he overhears and says, Mr. Glass. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still, you could still do that, right? Like, have the news, like, have the newscaster say his actual name. Like his given name, right? And the girl was like, "Yeah, I remember that." What, what did they call him? And he had like some goofy name, and then he could have been like, "It's Mister Glass" or something, you know, something along those lines. Something that felt could have been. They could have just said, "Oh, he got. He's getting sent to this special, fancy mental institution." And they're like, "Oh, hey, isn't that where they sent that other guy?" Like, yeah, it's not somewhere that they send a lot of people. So it's like. Oh yeah, that's where they sent that other guy who did this and that. Yeah, yeah. What was his name? And then yeah, it could have, it, it could have been better. Yeah, it it didn't. The I get really annoyed by small things like this when it only would have taken an extra couple seconds to fix it. You know, like. It, but, the, but the problem is for for someone like him, M Night Shyamalan, or and maybe not necessarily him, but they don't see anything wrong with it. So it's not something like that they see that needs to be fixed it's that's just our opinion yeah well the it's all about having the twist be the most impactful yeah right and so so the more build up you give to it the more people are going to have things like oh wait is this that like it's not all going to happen at once it's not going to be this 
you know, uh, glass shattering moment of here's the twist. It's going to be, they don't, he doesn't like to do a slow build up to it. He just likes to hit you in the face with it. And I think that's why there's less logic when the twist shows up. Cause you, ha- you so, kind of have to make logical steps, yeah. extra logical steps to get to make some of these twists to work. So you knew you knew about the the twist, or mm-hmm. that these took place in the same universe before you watched this movie. Yes. Now, had you not known, do you think you would have liked it more? Uh, had you not been expecting it at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there. Yeah, no, definitely. If I didn't know it was coming. I would have yeah. been a lot more excited about it for sure. But knowing that it's coming, I I was like, oh, this wasn't this wasn't worth what I thought was coming. <laughs> that that's a, I think we both missed out on what could have been then. <laughs> yeah. You knew and I didn't know, but I also hadn't seen Unbreakable, so it had no impact on me. Split is about James McAvoy who has multiple uh well they call it DID, which is disassociative identity disorder I identity believe. disorder yeah. hey taylor Inickson is saying hi that guy sounds like a real jerk uh okay so it does work it's just no one is talking yeah no one likes us it's good that's that makes me feel better i'd rather no one like us and no one talk to us than someone try to talk to us and us just ignore him yeah exactly um but so yeah so he's got james mcavoy has disassociative identity disorder uh, it's kind of starts, picks up with his psychologist, psychiatrist. What do you go to? Uh, I would say that is a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist who is like giving lectures on it and like teaching about it and trying to show that she's people, devoted her whole life. To it. Yeah. People who have it are not. It's not just a personality shift. It's not one person pretending to be a bunch of different people, even subconsciously or unsubconsciously. It's these are actual different people taking one body. And when they change, they change their physical presence as well. Like some people have like, uh, so with James McAvoy, one of his characters, Jade had to uh, take insulin for his diabetes. One of them had to wear glasses. One of them uh, is bigger and stronger than the rest. Some of them are weaker. Like, and it, it's a really interesting idea. Oh, it's super compelling for sure. I I really enjoyed all of that, and I enjoyed even yeah, just any scene with her talking about it with someone else mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, it was super interesting to me. Just like how she would talk about how like one of them, you know, could be. She had patients that were like one of the you know identities is like left-handed yeah or you know just different uh, handwriting and stuff mm. like that that's that's crazy i don't know how real all that is i think they take a lot of liberties with uh oh i'm sure but that's fine i'm fine with that the so here's here's my issue i i had a bigger issue with this the first time around yeah and then i kind of talk to myself through it the second time to make it to make it make more sense is that so she was talking about or or, or okay so I, we're gonna jump around or whatever but right. so we see mcavoy has 23 different identities inside his body yes but there is also a potential 24th that they call like the beasts yep. right mm-hmm. and so when it's finally revealed and he's like transforming into it he's like climbing the wall and stuff like that and i know they talked about it earlier but he can do that yeah and i thought that the first time at least i was like that is to me that is so dumb Mm. like there's 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 no there's no identity that you can take on that all of a sudden you can climb walls yeah like that made no sense to me right? so yeah i i agree with you i had the same issue until i watched the behind the scenes the making of this one and well, hold on let me let me before you say it let me tell you so that was my first time but then i watched it again today okay and i had a different thought i thought well now that i know that this takes place in a universe where there are potential superheroes yeah and villains i thought it's it's it could very easily be this guy is a 
one of his identities is a is a villain, which mm-hmm. is this beast, right? That he has maybe has or has limited control over. Let's say like um, I, I don't know who to compare it to. Let's say maybe like a let's let's call it Dracula, right? Yeah, Dracula can turn into a a, a, a bat, like a vampire bat, mm-hmm. right? So it's like let's say that one of twenty four identities, twenty three of them are human. Or regular person, one of them is Dracula. As Dracula, he can turn into that bat. Hmm. It made more sense in my head when I was saying it. <laughs> but basically, it, well, you're it, not, it's plausible you're, to me that one of his identities is a person who can change into a beast. He's he's a villain who also happens to have twenty three other identities. Yes, you're you're not wrong. That's that was the intention, right? That was so, my second thought. Okay. Uh, M Knight said the idea came from, you know, okay, you, you with a placebo, right? You can take medicine and fix your body because you think it's doing something, even though there's no right. medicine, right? Um, you can people can will themselves into, you know, changing things about them. They can lower their heart rate and do all this different stuff just by their their mind. And he said, you know, with this disassociative identity disorder people you know have left and right handwriting they take on different physical attributes and all this different stuff it's like what if one of those personalities believed so strongly that he was a superhero or like someone with superpowers right what would happen and that was kind of the premise behind the beast is that personality believes so hard that he is a superhero or a superpowered person that it became true. Well, okay, that but that makes less sense to me. <laughs> that I I get what he's saying and yeah. that's fine, but but no matter how hard you believe something, it's not going to give you bulletproof unrealistic you know, on you know, physical abilities like that. Like, okay, what well, if it's like, not? This isn't a documentary, Taylor. No, I get that, but I'm saying he's. It's almost like he's taken away from his own concept, or at least maybe I just thought of the concept in my head. I sounds better that it's not that he that this identity believes so strongly that he is this beast that he turns into it. It's just that he is that beast it's the because we are in a world where there are fa- fantasy type <clears throat> elements like superheroes and villains yeah you i think you're saying the same thing i think you're just hearing it yeah i I'm, I'm, the yeah i am sure that's the, the beast is to himself a superhero but kevin right wendell crumb I don't, is not a superhero and so right. when the beast takes over kevin's body he believes so strongly that he is a superhero that he forces Kevin's body into being a superhero because okay. the personality of the beast is a superhero that it, it, it yeah. man- physically changes Kevin's body into being a superhero. And the idea is comparing it to a placebo effect, right? You believe you're taking antibiotics, your body fights off the infection, you get better just because you believe it. The beast believes that he is a superhero, so his body reflects that by becoming a superhero or a superpowered person because he's a villain. Yeah, <laughs> if you say so. Um, but so this movie starts off with a couple of girls at school. Uh, two of them are best friends. They don't like this other girl, but their dad is like, "Hey, let's offer a ride home." Uh, they all get in the car together. And James McAvoy shows up and kidnaps the three girls and sprays the sprays them all with like chloroform or something like that, knocks them all out. Yeah. And he takes them back and puts them into a room. And it's very similar to um um uh what's the movie with John Goodman? Uh Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. Um, and so he traps him in this. I heard that Netflix is going to buy the rights to this movie and turn it into one of the Cloverfield movies. Oh, that sounds like it would be promising. They're just going to, yeah, it's just going to be called split Cloverfield. (laughs) Um, they locks him in a room and they're like panicking. Like we got to do something. We got to get out of here. What are we going to do? And 
the girls, so <clears throat> the main girl, I, I can't even remember her name. Um, uh, I say Anne? Chloe. What am I talking about? No. Uh, oh, what was it? C? <laughs> what? C? <laughs> <laughs> you just. I probably started with a C. Her um, name is C. Let me see. Uh, Anne? Rachel. <laughs> Just keep Shut saying up. names. Uh, Casey. Casey. See, I was close. Casey, Claire, and Marcia. Is that right? Uh, Marcia? Uh, Marcia? No, it's definitely not Marcia. It's M A R C I A. Yeah, that's Marcia. That's Marcia? That's not Marcia. Yeah. I ain't yeah. no dummy. Don't lie to me. It's a it is a way to spell Marcia, I promise you. Really? I don't believe you. That looks like Marcia. Could, no, I know what it looks like. I'm but I'm telling you it's pronounced Marcia. I don't trust anything you say. Anyways. Because these, there's there's another actress with that name. Uh Marcia Gay Harden. Yeah. Something. I used Harding. to think it was Marcia. It's Marcia. Hmm. Um so well Sorry. I'm gonna trust you, and but if I sound stupid, I'm blaming you. You you do sound stupid. <laughs> uh, Claire, Casey, and Marsha are all trapped together. Casey and Marsha, or actually uh, Claire, says we need to fight back. We need to attack this guy and you know overpower him. But the only way it's gonna work is if all three of us do it. And Casey's yeah. like, no, that's a terrible idea. That'll never work. He'll overpower us and win. What a dumb person she's supposed to she's put out like oh she's the logical one she understands three people on yeah. one stand a fighting chance she's like oh you think they, your sure your will. six months of taekwondo is really gonna help you yeah yeah it will because three people on one person can hold down someone's arms two of them can hold down someone's arms and one can just beat the crap out of them for a while you can like you you may be small, you, you may be smaller than him, he may be strong, but three people on one definitely have a fighting chance. <laughs> Creep me out. Um and but she's <laughs> the movie plays it like she's so logical about this. Like yeah. Like no, she's this, like miles ahead of these other girls because yeah. she's got experience with it's all her lessons her dad taught her, but <sighs> But yeah, so yeah. she she's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not helping you out. This is going to end poorly. And we need to figure out what, what this is, what's going on. Then he walks in the room and drags Marsha out. And Marsha like runs over to Casey for help. And he's, you know, James McAvoy is dragging her out. And she's like, pee on yourself, pee on yourself. And she goes yeah. out and does it. And then he throws her back in, makes her clean herself up. But it turned out he wanted to watch her dance, which was, I mean, not... Not that there's anything like that. <laughs> Don't you dare try to say that's not creepy. No, 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 no. I was going to say. Look, I like to watch teenage girls <laughs> dance as much as the no. next guy. I wish they didn't make him the villain. <laughs> no, no, no. Not what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not. It's better than rape is my point. But I don't know how to say that. And it be. <laughs> it would still be traumatic, right? You get kidnapped and someone forces you to take your shirt off and dance for him. Very traumatic. Yeah. But it makes him seem a little more innocent in like um a little less sinister, not more innocent, right? That he's not yeah. that he's not doing it to rape him. He's just a creep. Yep. Not good. I'm not not yep. in support of this. <laughs> But I can get behind your creepiness on that level. Thank, yes. thank you. <laughs> um, uh, so he puts her back in and they're like, you know, panicking. She's like, we got to figure out what's going on. Then they hear a woman talking to James McAvoy. And then they start screaming at her like, help us, help us. Get us out of here. Get us out of here. And opens the door. And now James McAvoy is in a dress. And this is when we start to realize he has split personalities. He's Crazy. And, I thought he played each personality so well. Yeah, it, James McAvoy is he the best actor ever? Like he he 
might be after this. I don't know. That his, was fantastic. His performance in this movie was great because not only did they all have he very... should get an Academy Award for each of his personalities. <laughs> not only did they all like have very four awards. Not only did they have very distinct personalities within each character. Uh, yeah, he was able to do it on screen. Like they they change clothes a lot to like signal who he is, but yeah. he was able to like change within one scene and be very distinct about it without having to change his clothes, which was well. And he was even doing where he was one character pretending to be another character to trick <laughs> yeah, the psychiatrist. Yeah, that was bonkers now here's a question right mm. so so one character is the the woman right and she wears like the the woman outfit and yes. then another one is the like the little boy uh hedwig head hedwig was the woman uh, judy is that right am i thinking of that right? uh jade jade no, no jade there was not. jade but that wasn't the main woman the main jade. woman was well jade was a guy i think jade was the diabetic oh was it mm-hmm I think okay, it's Judy. So what was, I think it's Judy. I don't think it was. I don't think it was Judy. June, maybe. Uh, oh, I, I almost want to say like Barbara. Patricia. I know that's not it. But Patricia. Yeah. Mm, not even close to Judy. Okay. Way to go, <laughs> dum dum. So here's my question: Yeah. If he's going from Patricia to, let's say Dennis, uh -huh. right? He's got to he's got to change clothes. Yes. At what point is he switched personalities? Before he changes, after he changes, is he switched to Dennis and be like, "Why am I wearing women's clothing? I should change into these guy clothes." <laughs> no, I think he changes or, after. I think after. So what makes him change? What makes him change his clothes? Because he's that's what he's comfortable in. No, so okay, so like if you he's imagine Patricia and he's dressed as Patricia. I understand. What is the what is the transition to Dennis? He transitioned he and clothes? then no. No, afterwards. Okay. Imagine you woke up so in your it, Dennis. Imagine Dennis. imagine you woke up in your brother's clothes, right? Wouldn't you okay. want to change? Like even if they're similar and they're like a similar yes. style, you'd be of, like out of these out of these women's clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You wouldn't want to be. That's where you were going with that. Like you were setting <laughs> it up to, and then you just kind of didn't. Well, I I said similar styles, right? You both wear women's clothes. Now you're just insulting me. Okay, I get it. <laughs> no, uh, you wouldn't want to be in someone else's clothes, right? You'd be like, oh, this is kind of weird. I want to change, and so they change. Right. He changes a personality. Then he goes and changes clothes because he wants to be in his own or that that personality wants to be in in their own. No, no, I, I get that. I, I'm wondering is as Dennis, is he always like, why am I wearing women's clothes? No, they know. They know what's going on. They're all aware oh, of each yeah, other. Yeah, that's true. He's aware. That's yeah. true. They're all aware because they said it's imagine a, a, a chair is a in the, yeah, a room with a yeah. bunch of chairs in a circle and one chair is in the middle in a spotlight. We take turns sitting in that chair, but they're all aware of each other. They all know what's going on. Um, okay. That's but yeah, fine. so the girls are kidnapped. They decide not to fight back um, until Claire. Or so Patricia shows up and they find out that he's got um, the multiple pers personalities. And now they're like yeah. really panicking. They're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of here? And then Hedwig shows up. And they're talking to Hedwig and they realize that the room has just been made safe and that it's all made out of drywall. So they're like, maybe there's a place we can escape from. Maybe he covered up something with drywall, another door, window or something. So they start pounding around and then they find a hole in the ceiling. And uh, Claire is digging a hole and like it finds a grate and a air vent shaft. And Hedwig is pounding on the door, trying to push, trying to push, but... The girls are overpowering him. But while that's all happening, Hedwig gets Dennis instead. And Dennis just opens the door with no issue. Just like shoves it open. Yeah. And I, I thought that was such Dennis a... Dennis is the biggest and strongest. Yeah, I thought that was so cool of uh, um, 
for them to do how the strength reflects the the personality yeah and so for them to put in the movie like so clearly like oh he's he's overpowered as hedwig but as dennis he's super like way stronger than them um yeah. i thought visually that was a cool storytelling moment but uh absolutely she's in the air vent and gets out and is running out running out and hides in a vent and then dennis finds her and locks her in a separate room which again i thought this was another great moment because normally in a movie like this if you're not going to kill that character you're just going to throw her back in that original room but dennis is like yeah now you guys aren't being together anymore you're uh you're causing problems you're going to be by yourself i was like oh that's a that that makes a lot of logical sense from the captor's point of view. Yeah, for sure. But so then, um, oh. no, go ahead. So then they're now they're separated. They don't know what's going on with Claire. I would, if I was them, I would assume she's dead, right? Yeah. Like that would be your first thought. It's like, oh, he definitely killed her. So their their panic level didn't increase. They stayed pretty much at the same. They're like, oh, we still got to figure out how to get out of here. Um, they are hanging out with Patricia. The uh, James McAvoy is now Patricia. She's making them yep. food and is like, hey, come out here. Come sit at the table. Like, let's be more civilized about this. You guys, you don't have to be in that room. Come, come eat at the table. Uh, Marissa picks up a chair and smashes it on the back of Patricia and yeah. takes off running. Dennis shows back up through James McAvoy, makes um, makes Casey go back in the room. Casey just listens, doesn't help again. Like once your friend is committed, you know, like is smashed him over the chair or over the back with a chair, jump in yeah, and you help. Go you yeah, you gotta do something. Like even if you think, oh, that was a bad idea, it's like, oh, well, we're both gotta- committed now. We need to, yeah, exactly. we need to work together. I'm gonna help you however I can and do something but she just stood there like oh, i can't believe she would do that and then went back in her room with no like no issue at all and yeah. uh marcia ran away and how did she get caught where did she get caught at um she just runs into another room right and doesn't have yeah, anywhere to go something like that yeah so she gets locked in a separate room as well now all the girls are separated and Casey is trying to befriend Hedwig because Hedwig is innocent because he's a nine-year-old in Kevin's body, in James McAvoy's yeah. body, and is kind of manipulating them. And he says, like, oh, yeah, I listen to uh, Kanye, West Kanye West on my uh, speaker or my uh, CD boombox in my room next to the window. And she's like, can I, I want to see that. Can I listen to Kanye West with you? And he's like, mm, I don't think so. And it's like, come on, it'll be fun. Like, and so she finally convinces him, takes him up there, and it turns out the window is just a picture he drew. And <laughs> I thought I, I really enjoyed that. Was that was great. Uh, I thought yeah. that was a funny moment. It's like, like, see, it's uh, close. Yeah, and now it's open. <laughs> um, but she's like, you know, heartbroken about it because she thought, oh, I was going to be able to escape. And he's that like, was you, your way out. Yeah. You thought this was a real window. You were trying to get out of here. And she's like, no, no, no. You just told me you were going to show me something cool. And then he's like, fine, here it is. And shows that it was a, uh, a walkie talkie, which yeah. this part was a little confusing to me because he says, I stole it from Dennis and Dennis doesn't even know. And now I know they're yeah. not like hyper aware of what's going on uh, when they're in there. When it, So whoever's in the spotlight is the only one aware of what's happening right. in the world. It just seems... Uh-huh. It seems strange that Hedwig would know that Dennis doesn't know. Like, I I don't know how much communication they have outside of the spotlight. I guess that's my confusion. Like, well, I mean, if he, so he steals it as Hedwig and hides it as Hedwig. And then, yes, I guess, presumably Dennis never comes looking for it or conf- I don't know. Yeah. And I, I know what well, you're that's, saying. That's how does he confront Hedwig? It would have to be outside of the spotlight, right? When they're just in the, in Kevin's body. But what, what, <sighs> how much control, how much 
conversating are they able to do when they're like that that part like fell apart for me i was like what is going on like how do they discuss because patricia and uh dennis are the only ones who believe in the beast which is the 24th personality and hedwig yeah. figured out a way to control and allow who gets to sit in the chair because before it was um barry barry was in charge of which personality was allowed out Patricia yeah. and Dennis got uh, kind of excommunicated from being able to do that because one, Dennis was a big creep trying to watch teenagers without their clothes on. And I think right. Patricia was just kind of an evil person. I was a little confused yeah. by that. Um, <clears throat> but so Barry wouldn't let it happen, but they tricked Hedwig into taking over. And now only Hedwig, Barry and Patricia are the ones being used. But what, what is going on with the other personalities? What are they, are they talking? Do they just cease to exist? I don't know. Can, are yeah, they aware? Can they talk to each other when someone else is in the spotlight? Because then... I don't know. It's so complex. Because then when um, the other personalities, when uh, Dennis would sleep for a minute, the other personalities would hop on their phone and uh, email the psychiatrist. Like, hey, we need your help. We need your help. We need your help. Then Dennis would have to yeah. go as Barry or Patricia would go as Barry. Off. I was a little confused yeah. who was pretending to be Barry, but I think it was Dennis. I thought so. But because I, she said that, that she, she said, if I had to guess you were actually Dennis because Dennis has OCD and you were like fidgeting with the, the cigarette tray or something on the yeah, table. Yeah. Um, and so they are, they'd have to go to the psychiatrist and be like, oh, no, it's fine, you know. But see, but they, see that that's another question is if – do they talk to each other or do not? Like how would Barry or, you know, what someone know that Dennis has OCD? Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, and, I don't and, get... and the psychiatrist had never met him, so she wouldn't be able to make that observation on her own. No, but yeah, they would have – yeah, I don't know. I don't know who, I don't know how the conversation works when they're not in the spotlight. I don't know if they have to leave notes for each other or like, I don't, I don't get how Patricia and Barry convince Hedwig about their plan. Yeah. I don't know. That's some like next level mind. <laughs> um, so but anyways, messed Casey now has a walkie talkie. She turns it on and she hears someone talking and Hedwig's like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. And she's like, hello, I need your help. I've been kidnapped. And then the guy on the walk, the other just, end of the walkie talkie is like, hey, who is this? Who put you up to this? He assumes it's a, a prank. Yeah. yeah. Which that guy's got to feel so bad, right? Because I assume that he worked at the zoo that they were at. And, yeah, you know, like that was one of the walkie talkies for the zoo. And so you yeah. would know that people were kidnapped in your zoo <laughs> later on. Uh and but, you, you oh, could have helped. Right now, it's probably something different. <laughs> yeah, this is not related to that that weird <laughs> walkie-talkie message I got. Um, but yeah, so that happens, and Hedwig is panicking, and Dennis takes over. And I thought his reaction to her on the walkie-talkie was really menacing because he didn't attack her. He didn't jump on her. He didn't rip it out of her hands. He just looked at her like, you know, I'm disappointed with you. I, I thought yeah. I could trust you more and just walked over and was like, here, give it to me. And like, I thought that moment was very strong for, for, you know, James McAvoy, but Dennis, Dennis's character specifically of like, yeah. he's like, this doesn't matter. You're not going to do anything. You have no hope. You have no chance. Just give up and go back just in your room. This. And, yeah. uh, throughout all of this, we find out that the beast is coming there they've been talking about it these the girls are there to be a sacrifice to the beast to yep i didn't quite understand that part uh they because so barry had to leave to find the beast so the beast could take over to come back to the zoo and to eat the girls essentially yeah I, what I guess. <laughs> why did he have to leave if like I ha why did he have to go and find the beast and why did the beast have to have a sacrifice 
to be able to it's become a, real. It's a beast. No, it's a beast. But if it's, it's a, a beast too. it's a personality. None of the other personalities, like, so the the theory with the personalities was there is a traumatic moment that created them. But do you think they were all created at the same time, or no? Did they uh, they so like Dennis was the first. That's what he says. Because when he was, when Kevin was three, his mom freaked out about, you know, not being able to, uh, she would beat him anytime something was dirty. So Dennis was created as yeah. OCD to keep everything spotless so that Kevin would be safe. And that Dennis yep. was kind of the protector of Kevin. And then all the other personalities happen at later stages in life um, because, you know, like, whatever was going on Hedwig happened when the Kevin was nine, but he never grew up or, you know, Patricia was probably a nun at like a Catholic school that, you know, these, these things like got implanted into Where, him from his circumstances. It could have just been his mom or his mom. But the, uh, the beast was created to do something traumatic. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it wasn't like Kevin did something traumatic and created the beast. They right. they set everything up so the beast could come and do something traumatic so he could become, come into existence. It just, because once the beast showed up, right? Once he took over, he didn't have to kill anyone to exist. So, they set it up just so he could eat them because that's what he wanted. And if that was yeah, the case, that is confusing. why did they have to kidnap people? Why couldn't he just have grabbed one of the hundred people he ran past when he became the beast? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the, it gets real convoluted when you start, why did they have to kidnap him to make the beast show up? Yeah. And I, I guess the point was, because the Beast's theory was people who didn't have trauma in their lives deserve to die. So that was maybe it. They, he needed to be sure that who he was killing was trauma-free, but I don't know. that. It just feels like a very weak uh, point. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so the Beast, they get everything set up. The beast is now have taken over Kev Kevin's body. He's taller, stronger, able to climb on things, able to you know run really fast, and sprints back from the train station back to the zoo. And uh, Claire, not Cla yeah, Claire and uh, Marsha have almost escaped. They've figured out a way with a coat hanger to do undo a deadbolt. Unlocks and, the door, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we don't know what's happening. It cuts away. We see the beast run in, cuts away, and uh, Casey finally gets out of her room. How does she get out of her room? Uh, okay, so I'm trying to remember. She she just pries it open. That's I think what it was. so, yeah. yeah. She just pries. She's able to, uh, like, jimmy the lock open. Um, but I, I guess even before we get to that point, the psychiatrist shows up and finds out that the beast is coming, but the bee, no, Dennis kills her. Dennis like squeezes her to death, right? Yes. No, no, no. Uh, I, yeah. uh, I keep getting all mixed up. He, Dennis chlor chloroforms her and leaves her there. At first. Yeah. And leaves her. And she writes um, down, say his name, Kevin Wendell Crumb on a piece of paper gets up grabs a knife and the beast shows up and just crushes her spine with a backwards bear hug and kills yeah, her pretty much that's when we see casey get out of the room and then we see the two doors for claire and marcia are open and my first thought was like, oh they got out then they go in she looks in and claire has been her stomach has just been torn up just eaten up yes yeah. And she so she, eaten. yeah, she was dead. Then she opens up the other door, and there's Marsha, and she's like, "Come on, come on, we gotta go." And then you see the beast drag her behind the the 
the bookcase and starts eating her. And Casey is just like, never mind. And closes the door and locks her in there. I was like, yeah. dang, Casey, like you're not going to help. And then she <sighs> runs into the other room, finds the paper. The beast is coming to get her. And she starts shouting the name and everything kind of goes crazy for Kevin because for some reason saying his name calls him out of it. And yeah. he's like, what's going on? Where am I? Is it still 2014? She's like, so, no. Yeah, so it's been that long. That since four he's years, been out, three years. Right. And uh, so she, he's like, you know what? Or he's like, who did all this? And she said, you did it. He's like, you just kill me. Just shoot me in the head. There's a shotgun in that cabinet. And I have bullets in my um, work. Uh, what do you call that? A uh, what is it? A locker in my work locker. Yeah. Shoot me in the head. That's the only thing that's going to help. So she, you know, is going for the gun, and then Jade shows up. And is like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. Like he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then another one shows up and is like, come on, I'm Barry. Like, you know, we we're helping him. Like, just don't don't kill us, don't kill us. And then Hedwig takes over, and she's like panics because she knows that Hedwig is in control and when Hedwig yeah. is in control he allows the beast to take back over and so now she's got a shotgun but she's running she finds the bullets and locks herself in a cage and the beast shows up and she's shooting at him shooting at him and she finally hits him but he gets up and still comes at him and is tearing open the bars like bending the bars to get her and during yeah. all this time, another uh, small, or not small, but another plot point was that she wore a lot of T-shirts because Dennis would get upset anytime they got dirty. He was like, take off your shirt, take off your pants. And it wasn't, this wasn't as creepy as him watching them dance. Like it wasn't like a perverted take off your shirt thing. It was like, mm -hmm. it's dirty. You need to take that off. And yeah. so. They got the drywall particles on it. Yeah. And he was. He was creepy. Dennis was frustrated that she wore so many t-shirts, but he wasn't making them take it off so he could just look at them. He was making them to clean yeah. it. But she had like five different shirts on. And so when she is in uh, the cage, her last or second to last layer, she had like a tank top on underneath. Um, yeah. The, that second to last layer, she took off because it was in the way because it was all torn up. But it was like a crop top where you could see her stomach. And she was all scarred up from her uncle, which is another story plot we oh, didn't yeah. get to. Uh, I completely forgot about the his, rapey uncle. Yeah, it was raping her as a kid, and then her dad died. And so he, the uncle, she moved in with the uncle. And so when the beast uh, saw her... nightmare. Yeah. When the beast saw her stomach, saw the scars on her stomach, he starts laughing. He's like, you're clean. You've suffered trauma. You deserve to live. And just lets her be. And she's yeah. just sitting there like with a shotgun and not knowing what to do. And then finally a security guard walks through and finds her and he's like, Oh, Which what are you doing in here? Think, like, how why often does security come through here? Well, why didn't it ever happen before? You know? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Oh, just making my rounds every <laughs> five years. <laughs> um, so they, they get her out and then she's in the police car and they're like, oh, your uncle's here to pick you up. And she gives like a side eye look at the police officer. And I was just like a little confused about that storyline. Like what the. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't sure what they were trying to imply with that. Or yeah, I don't know if she was going to speak up. You know, she just went mm -hmm. through this whole thing. She's like now I can talk to her about how I don't want to go live with my uncle. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I don't know. It didn't really make sense. Yeah, they don't they don't resolve that at all. But um, then the diner scene shows up, and uh, Kevin is going. I think he was arrested, right? No, he was on the loose. Yes, and uh, he's like, "Oh, that's the same guy, or that guy reminds me of that crazy guy from a while ago, Mister Glass from Bruce Willis." And <laughs> credits roll. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, Split is a great movie. Uh, James McAvoy does a great job, but some of the stuff, the logic, the twists, really falls apart. Like it's not. It's you. You have right. to dispend a lot of dis. Uh, 
belief, disbelief, belief. You have to, you have to just say, I'm just going to accept what you're telling me from the story. You can't, yeah. you can't question it because there's not a lot of uh, rigidity to, for it to be questioned in that way. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of uh, Shyamalan, Shyamalan, <laughs> his better movies. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 think. I think Six Sense is better than Split, but I think Split is is really good. Only, really, because of James McAvoy, though. Like, oh, for, well, yeah, a hundred percent. Ten Cloverfield Lane, I had mentioned earlier, but that's great only because of John Goodman. You take John away Goodman, those actors, yeah. and those movies are kind of subpar. Yep. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, he was fantastic. No. Yeah. Um, next week, I, we haven't talked about this yet, Taylor, but I was thinking okay. we could do the impossible with Ewan McGregor. Impossible. Never heard mm-hmm. of it. It's about the Thailand or the, uh, tsunami that hit Thailand a few years ago. Families uh, on vacation. No. Giant, uh, uh, Ooh, what's the giant, uh, tidal wave tsunami hits and, uh, I'm familiar. They get washed away and like split up and stuff. It looks good. That is, impl- have you not, is it new? No, it's a couple years old. And you have not seen it? I have not seen it. But okay, I think yeah, let's do that. One. So yeah, if you want to listen to that, you can go over to Patreon right now, unless you're watching this on Twitch, then you can't because we haven't talked about it. But if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on, or listening to this on the podcast feed, go to Patreon for a dollar. You can listen to it now. Uh, you can help Taylor and I decide who has to pay the punishments each month because whoever has the least oh, amount of yeah. votes pays the punishment. And somehow it has been me almost every single time. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> um, it it has been very, very uh, heartbreaking for me every time it's happened. But, you know. Oh, man. And uh, it's it's been so fun for me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we'll be back with our conversation about impossible next week. Uh, follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod, like us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube. And if you want, you can hang out with us on Twitch when we do this, which is generally, uh, going to be, what is it? 8 PM, 9 PM Pacific standard time. Yeah. Wednesdays, but Tuesdays, Tuesdays. Yeah. Uh, but it's a little flexible. We got to, it doesn't always work out exactly it's- like that. Very flexible. <laughs> but uh, yeah. We so do thank- what we want and that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll be back soon. Woo!